Yeah, so if I am um, going through the questions or uh, are, we, are, we, are we going through any conversational way or you want me to go for the things that I, I, can, I can share? We, we can go with you, sir, like questions one by one, like, and we have students also who will ask questions side by side. Uh, my, for my question, my question is about the butterfly mark, which is a feat, of course. That's one question from my side. Definitely. Yeah, so uh, first of all, let me, uh, let me just explain to you that how I came in this business and what, what it, it's important for us to be, you know, like look into the background sites uh, and explore this area. So um, if you can see the person behind me in the photograph, he's my elder brother, Manish Jivani, and he's also a co-founder of uh, uh, Smiling Rocks. And uh, I'm also one of the co-founders. So uh, we, we, were, we were doing business of Mind Diamond um, or white uh, label manufacturing around the world with, with uh, many, many different brands. And uh, that was our experience. And uh, we, all, we were always in search of something that we can, we can feel that worth of our being in this community. And uh, we can share our, our best knowledge to the, to, the, to the community back or to this world back. And um, we have seen the lab grown diamond is, is a very potential business model that we can we can explore ourselves and it excited us because of through this business model we can definitely connect back to the community that's that was our our main goal to giving back to the community and um, uh, so we designed a business model where we definitely can look forward ourselves uh, to strongly um, find ourselves where we are you know like catering to this world in many different aspects. And uh, that was the biggest motivation for us to be designed this model. And uh, we have, uh, we are proudly sharing 3% of our business revenue uh, to the cha charity foundation of Smiling Rocks through our business model. And that's, that's one of the most, uh, and the biggest motivation that me and my brothers and my family are sharing through Smiling Rocks. And, we are um, we are continuing doing this, and that's how I we 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 decided to step into this business and serve the industry differently. But yes, uh, lab grown diamond is a great great opportunity for uh, anyone who is thinking uh, to extend their business model differently, or on the creative sides, or also thinking as a new new. Uh, career path or or building a different uh, side of the business, and I think the lab grown can serve all of uh, those who are seeking uh, uh, to look into the jewelry industry, and that's that's the options uh, lab grown provided today, and we see the industry is growing like anything, and. Um, like if I'm giving you some more detail about lab grown diamond. So it, it uh, lab grown diamond is, is not a uh, very strange name in now. And since you are all, all our student of uh, uh, gemology, and then this is, this might be one of your uh, subject you might have explored already that um, this is also an available options of, uh, you know, in, in, in the gem category. And um, it grows with the two different method with, uh, which is one of them is uh, CVD, which is called uh, chemical vapor depositions and the HPST, high pressure, high temperature. And uh, these two methods um, makes the diamonds similar to the mine diamonds. So they are physically, chemically, optically 100% diamonds and they are, um, they are as equal as the diamond except their origins are. So you can see like the diamonds are mostly um, having the purest version of the carbon and that's what lab grown diamonds uh, provide them. And uh, the best thing is like, it's affordable, it's available, uh, it's more available, it's, uh, it's the products that everyone can look for and everyone can have it. Um, it's the same luxury, you will, you will have it, one you have it from mine and one you have it from, uh, uh, from the lab. So that's how the lab grown diamonds are, you know, like more available for us, all of us in, in, a, in, a, 
in a different categories as well. It's uh, it's available in many colors from D to K colors in the full range of the mine diamonds in all qualities of the diamonds. So basically, we are providing um, in like we are we are having diamonds in the lab exactly mimicking those processes that we have it under the earth. So from VVS to I1, I2, I3 qualities, uh, D2, K, KLM colors, and exactly the same like pink, blue, and all the different fancy colors as well. So, so the characteristic of the diamonds is available in the lab as well. So those are uh, the, the prime, you know, like values lab, lab room diamonds also carry. And it's available in all. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, someone is asking a question. Um, sir, I have a question. Yes, please. It is a tiny one, but uh, other than uh, chemical and uh, high pressure, high temperature, are there any other ways that you can make diamonds? Uh, no, currently there is no other method that you can make diamond. There is someone, uh, I recently have seen that someone has made diamonds from the air. Um, which is also they use the carbon particles from the air and then they they build the, the carbon version and then they make the diamond. So yeah, that's uh, uh, so basically you're using the carbon, pure carbon form to create the carbon. And, uh, and then those two very famous methods are CVD and HPHT. So those are the two famous methods right now available in the market. And People are uh, searching because it's a technology-driven, uh, uh, you know, like a business, and people are searching. I, I hopefully we can have some more, more ways to build the diamonds. But yeah, right now we have two methods that we can build the diamonds. And uh, again, as I said, like it's available in all range. What we have it in mind as well. And um, yes, it's a, uh, it's very well uh, accepted by the whole world. Um, America is the largest country that consuming lab grown diamond today. Uh, still, I can say 85 to 90% of the uh, lab grown diamonds are still consumed by American consumers. Um, the, the world is opening their, you know, like thoughts and processes to accept the diamonds right now. I see Australia, Japan, Taiwan, Vietnam, uh, Asia is, is, is also uh, looking lab grown diamond as the strongest potentials for them. And um, India, I think India is the is the biggest potential market. I believe uh, we can see for lab grown diamond uh, lab grown diamond industry. Um, right now, the Indian India is is the strongest in the growing side. Uh, there is a few countries they are in the process of growing lab grown diamond, like India, China, maybe Russia, and uh, some part of the Ukraine as well. So these are the areas that we see the diamonds are growing in, in America as well, yeah. So uh, where we see the diamonds are able to grow and the, the factories are in place already. So these are the areas where we see the diamond. But India is playing a very strong role in uh, growing categories right now, especially in CBD side. Uh, um, I don't see HPHT is the technology still India has right now, but yes, uh, in coming days or coming years, that will be, uh, certainly, this uh, this technology will be taken care of by Indian as well. Hi, good evening, sir. Yes. Hi, hope you're doing well. Yes, thank you very much, Chitna. I'm, uh, I'm... Yeah. So my question was: Do you find um, do, do you find that you're able to reach the consumer and win their confidence? And secondly, are you able to reach the market uh, share you want to, or do you think it's just the beginning? Because uh, natural diamonds have uh, really a uh, head start on lab grown diamonds. So can you break the into the consumer's confidence? Uh, first of all, like uh, uh, if you're talking about the consumers, uh, 
and the acceptance. Let's yeah. let's break it down. Your questions like how yes. consumers are accepting these yeah. diamonds. Uh, Lab-grown diamond industry from the beginning, uh, it's one hundred percent driven by consumers. Yes. Uh, if the consumers don't like the lab-grown diamond, it, this industry wouldn't be a five to ten billion dollar industry in just a few years span. Oh, okay. This is a one hundred percent consumer-driven product. Number two. Um, as long as I have seen the educations are spreading, like people are getting known about, oh yeah, this is 100% diamond. There is no, not a single 0.00001% you can say it's not diamond. It's 100% diamond. It's not fake diamond. It's not synthetic diamond. It's diamond. Uh, even the, after the FTC guideline of America, um, you, can, you can write only word diamond, but for the consumer's confident, you are, you, sh you should write the process of the growing, like yeah. lab grown diamonds or mine diamond, which yeah. makes consumers more confident the, the products they are purchasing right now. Okay. So the guidelines helps consumers to understand the products. And uh, when, when I see the education is getting more, more and more to the consumers, consumers acceptance rates are getting bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. Right now I see like 80% to 90% American retailers are, somehow carrying lab-grown diamonds or they are selling lab-grown diamonds or they know about lab-grown diamonds. Mm -hmm. And I can see like 75% or more consumers mm -hmm. of America, they are familiar with lab-grown diamonds and they are willing to buy lab-grown diamonds. So the reason is only the price is the biggest factors works over here. There is a huge difference in the pricing for mine and lab-grown diamond. Yes. I'm not saying that mine diamonds is expensive, but mine diamonds has their own value of uh, billions of year existence, the rarity, the angles of the rarity. So those are the angles that uh, lab, mine diamonds carry. Mm. Lab grown diamonds carry the price of affordability, the mm. size, um, you know, like the range of the size available for the consumers. Yes. But these are the biggest factor that consumers love that. And especially the women consumers, when they see that she can afford one carat diamonds and then the 50 pointers diamond, yeah. she would definitely go for bigger stones. And if she, she can, she know that she can afford two carat diamonds in a half of the price that she's spending for mine diamond, she's getting for two carat diamond. So these are the biggest factors that American consumers are experiencing today. I'm sharing with you right now. I myself has been spent many hours talking with consumers, sharing the knowledge and understand what they want and how they, the perceptions changing with them. So that's, that's excite me more that how exciting the, the American consumers are to getting lab grown diamonds in their luxury purchases. And that's the reason, that's the reason that America is, is, is the, the largest consumer of uh, consuming lab grown diamonds right now. And so far the world is getting familiar right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can see the differences are happening right now. So the market you are targeting is the US one. And how do you find the Indian market for lab grown? Yeah, I believe Indian market uh, is upcoming right now. We have seen that many brands in India right now are promoting lab grown diamonds. Yes. And I see that the, uh, the largest populations like India, China, or even America, these kind of countries uh, where we have a measure uh, chunk of our populations are middle class. Mm -hmm. And this is the most blessing products for them right now. So. So where the diamonds is a, is a desire stone for the middle-class people or many a bigger part of the, our populations in India, mm -hmm. now the diamonds will be more affordable and accessible for them. Yes. So when we see the diamonds are more available, mm -hmm. uh, more accessible in a certain price ranges for average consumers in India, mm -hmm. we will see the popularity is gaining in every part of the India. And I think India will be one of the largest consuming market as well for the lab grown diamond. Mm -hmm. And uh, recently I have noticed that the Indian government is, is supporting like anything to, the, to grow this diamond because it's helping India in every prospect. Mm -hmm. Let's say the currency stays in India because we are the growers, we are the consumers mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we are the manufacturers. Mm -hmm. So the rotations of the economy stays in India where we are, we are the heavy chunk of our, our rough diamond purchases in mind or any other part of the, the business is going out of India. So mm -hmm. I think this is the biggest interest of even Indian government mm -hmm. to explore this 
lab grown diamond industry within India. So I think these are the big changes we will see in future. Thank you. Thank you so much for your input. So you are manufacturers and yes, yeah, so we are. Uh, so we are. Uh, Smiling Rocks is a is a growing uh, grower, manufacturers, and end consumer brand. Okay. So we are in all sector uh, of this business. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. Hi, sir. Uh, thank you so much for speaking with us. I have a question. Yes. Um, so I was wondering if um, you think the labrum diamond price in the future will decrease further, especially if the supply of the stone increases. Do you think at one point it might stop being a luxury product? Well, it's a technology-driven business, so definitely we will see the increase of uh, production. Uh, and naturally, the increase of productions affect the pricing. Uh, mm -hmm. But overall, my perception is this industry is at the beginning stage right now. We are only at 2 to 3% or 5% of the global luxury industry today. Um, and um, it's just the beginning. Um, and um, we will see a lot of changes upcoming in, in this industry right now in terms of the acceptance by the consumers, the wide range of the, uh, the consumers flow of acceptance by the worldwide. So where the production will be increased, the demand will be increased as well. So um, when, as long as we are matching those two areas, the price can be controlled. And um, right now I don't see that we are at the stage of overproductions or, or we are even nearby because the range of the, the demand is much higher than the, the capacity of the growing today. Uh, and growing is not just a, it's, it's very easy part of the business right now. You need a special skills to be grow. You need a specific, uh, specific scientific, uh, uh, you know, like um, knowledge and expertise to build the grow the diamonds. And by having growing machines or by having growing instruments in your lab doesn't mean you are a grower. It takes a, it takes a long time to grow to understand and um, you know like go to the different layers of the growing. So we have experienced we have experienced all this uh, process of the growing diamond. So we we don't see that growing will be uh, that easy for upcoming time, but demand will be increased as well. And it even though it's becoming easier for in coming days, I see the demands will be a uh, huge in upcoming days in every sector because. Uh, Recently, um, you might have seen or maybe you have read the news is that many luxury brands are stepping into this business right now. Uh, I'm talking about like LVMH has invested in, uh, in, uh, in the lab grown sector. So we see that major uh, luxury brands worldwide are looking lab grown as, an, uh, as a biggest sustainable substitute for them. Because at, at lab grown, we are, we are looking as a, one of the biggest sustainable, uh, you know, like substitute for the mine diamond as well, which is the new and young consumers want to know more about that, what products can replace their luxury. And that slab grown is, is the great option for them. Absolutely, thank you so much. Uh, if you have any, any further questions you wanna know, please, do let me know. Um, I would definitely go for Ashwin's question on uh, on uh, positive luxury side of the butterfly mark. So, if you want me to take that, let me let me just give you a little bit about what butterfly mark is and what uh, positive luxury is actually. So, uh, as I said, like lab grown diamond is catering uh, the best option to look into the sustainable side of the business. And um, every brand around the world is, is looking at, um, you know, like how they can be more responsible towards their business to serve the consumers. And uh, it's not they are, 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 they are exploring this area only because they want it, because the consumers want that. Because consumers is asking questions about their products and their purchases. So it's, it's becoming a responsibility for all the, this, the serving brands or in the luxury brands to be, come up with solution for the consumer's demand. 
And I think this is the this is the great step that we all can do as an industry. So we are actually looking at the the best solution for the consumers that how best we can serve them and the sustainability to move towards the sustainability is the best options for all of us. So lab grown is one of the the strongest categories that we can definitely look at the best side of that. We don't have to mine the diamonds. We can grow in the lab uh, with using certain energies and all. Um, I'll, Again, it's not 100% sustainable, but it's major part of the business is covered as a sustainable side. So at Smiling Rocks, we take it as an our responsibility and, uh, uh, you know, like go and uh, audit our company as all the sector of our business, like an ESG framework that where are we standing right now. And uh, we wanted to report back to our consumers that as a Smiling Rocks, where we exactly stand in the in our our ESG framework, and positive luxury is a, is the third party auditing company who is independent uh, organization who who gives you a score on your sustainable frameworks and uh, uh, and then they certified you with the butterfly mark. So the butterfly mark stands for your standing on the sustainability. So that's what we receive it and we're giving it to our consumers. So every product of Smiling Rocks, when consumers buy them, they can scan the code and they can see that where this brand is standing in, in terms of like their uh, environment side or social side or government's governance side and um, even the innovation side. So that's how we, we, we kept our, ourselves as, as open for the consumers to understand our brand and then put the trust and value on with us. And that's why we, we make ourselves certified with positive luxury and sharing this butterfly mark proudly to the consumers and, and give them the sense of confidence that they are buying a sustainable luxury for them, which is believing in giving back, which is believing in serving the community with many different ways. Like we are, we have, our, our, as I said, like our foundation is mostly working towards the planting trees, uh, cleaning oceans. So we have cleaned more than 30,000 plus pound ocean trashes with our, our, uh, through our business model. We have planted around 150,000 trees through our business model. We are sponsoring a lot of scholarship through our business model. So that's how we believe our role as a brand that we can give back to the community. So I have another question. Um, I basically saw on the Smiling Rocks website that you inscribe, laser inscribe the logo on each diamond. Yes. I was wondering what the thought process behind that uh, action was. Yeah, so the, the thought process behind having our logo is the trust and the confidence. So we see this is the, we, we, we say this is our confident mark where we want our consumers to be clearly known that this is lab grown diamond. So neither, no one in our supply chain does take any, any extra benefit to mislead the consumers that, because both diamonds are exactly the same diamonds. So uh, we, we wanna make sure that our supply chain stays clean and we share this confident mark to our consumers when our consumers buy Smiling Rocks, they know this, every stone of ours have a logo on, on it. Uh, and um, when our, our, retail, our consumers return the piece to our retailers or our, our distribution channels, so they also know that this is Smiling Rocks um, piece of jewelry. So that's why we, we design uh, in our, our, our diamonds to decided to our, uh, logo to put the logo in our diamonds, and uh, that's um, our consumers. They love that, and they they exactly wanted to have uh, such a confident in their purchases when they're buying lab grown diamonds. And we are proudly sharing our logo with every consumers. Thank you. Uh, Any other questions? Do you offer uh, franchising model type of business uh, to clients? Uh, yeah. 
Can you repeat again? A franchisee type of uh, business model to young entrepreneurs. Like if they want to promote your brand to their friends, uh, do you like you know provide like a franchisee type of uh, projects? Close oh. to like friends have their circles, and uh, they also have large large circles. So even like you know they could promote your brands in Spotify again demands trust and confidence. Like, is, it, is it something that Smiling Rock provide? Yeah, I mean, like uh, we we do have many dif different distribution channels uh, for our business. So right now we are exactly uh, we are uh, we are we are with the shop and shop model. We are with uh, franchise model with our uh, with uh, with a, in our American sector. We also have a boutique models for our our uh, you know like in America right now. So we have a multi prong uh, you know like a distribution channel for us in in uh, in America right now. We we are we are testing in India right now for our business model right now with one of our partner right now, and uh, let's see how it goes because uh, again as I said it's uh, it's it's just uh, beginning in India right now. Uh, traditionally, we in India see diamonds and gold as an asset for us in the purchase right now. So, um, versus the West world is looking diamond uh, as a, not only an asset but also as a fashion accessories as well right now. So the design diamond dynamics are changing right now. The the young consumers don't want diamonds to be stay in their safe, but they wanted to enjoy every day. They wanted to explore it every day. They wanted to style them every day. So I see that it's just the beginning in India right now. The trend is changing. The young consumers are getting, uh, you know, like uh, in, in the step of buying. And right now, millennials especially say that they are the new buyers right now. So they, uh, well, well Gen Z and all that's the next step, but the millennials are definitely are, are the current purchaser right now. And then they understanding the value of the fashion and the lab grown, even as a as a as a high end side as well, true lab grown jewelry. So I see that once we get tested, right? Uh, as I've seen the many positive results from the other brands as well, they're expanding in um, their Indian networks. So if we get succeed, we definitely moving forwards there. With the different models. So, what is your opinion on uh, bubblegum pink lavender? Uh, I mean, I've heard this in market all the time. Right? Bubblegum pink is something in more in demand. Is is it something uh, strange? Like, what is your opinion on it? What what word you said? Bubble gum pink, that pink color of a uh, diamond, uh, especially lab grown. Uh, the you know the lab grown bubble gum pink is much more brighter and more attractive compared to that of the natural pink. So is it is it something that we like? Any idea on it? Well, I'm not familiar with the word you just mentioned that, but what about pink diamond? I can just say that. Uh, uh, yeah, that lab grown has the beautiful pink diamonds right now and. Um, um, again, I have seen the rarity of the pink diamond still remains same in lab grown as well. Not every stone can be a pink diamond. Not you can you can grow pink diamond easily. So uh, I think the pink will be always uh, the desired and favorite colors in any category of diamonds, whether it's a mine or lab. So yes, uh, the color diamonds, and especially blue and pink, blue is still possibly available, but the pink will be uh, will be remain as a desired colors for for the users right now. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, good evening. Can I ask one question, please? Yes. Uh, my question will be a little bit longer. Uh, I'm a gemologist and I'm already working in a laboratory. Yes. So every day we are encountering this kind of stones too much. Uh, so as you said, it's just a beginning. And you had mentioned about your logo inscribing on the girdle, which is a good thing. Uh, for example, that um, when there is radiation and annealing for uh, general electrics, they will mention 
the GE board, which is very nice to have a pure disclosure on that. Okay. So, but uh, I am working in Saudi Arabia right now. So talking about the market here, what we are actually facing is like uh, the background diamonds are coming from India, which is uh, to the client as a natural itself and having some local domestic lab reports. And when we check here in using our advanced spectroscopic method, we will find it as a, a irradiated one AB or one B diamond. And uh, we tell the customer that's a lab grown. So it's already creating a confusion, okay, among the people itself. And uh, it's a trust issue happening between the clients and the customers. So that uh, we need a clear disclosure for uh, policy or some awareness, market awareness for the future of this lab-grown diamonds. As a laboratory, we are also promoting this thing, like um, uh, as all we know, like lab-grown diamonds are the future. So we think that we need a clear uh, disclosure policy for each and every brands and uh, clear market awareness for this. What's your opinion on this? Well, ethical business practice has always remained the top priority in our business model. That which that should be, that in any sense of any any stage of the business, where whether it's mine or lab grown, the practice of the ethical business model should be always uh, at the first priority in uh, in our businesses. Where where you said you are a gemologist, so uh, you know, like the first things when diamonds nowadays, the first things when diamond goes to the lab uh, to testify whether undisclosed the lab first the test is that whether it's a diamond the the origin of the diamond whether it's mine or lab right exactly. so that's yes. the first thing the lab identified and then the second thing they do whether there has there has been any treatments on it or not um well both diamonds are available for treatment there is since many years the the mine diamond is also getting treated for many colors uh, whether it's called uh, the color treatments or whether it's called purity treatments, there has been always there. Uh, that's why we always have HPHT diamond, treated diamonds in mind. And the same times we also have in the lab because uh, the lab is type 2A version of the, of the, of the diamond. So exactly. the lab diamond is the purest version of the diamond categories, which is only 2 to 3% of mine diamond categories. So fortunately, we have the purest version of the diamonds available in the lab. And uh, I believe the disclosure of the products is more and much important for any stage. Uh, that's yes. why we put logo on it. And then we know that our consumers should be feel very confident that, that this diamonds is 100% lab grown. We do not want to have them any illusions that this is mine diamonds. This is not mine diamond. This 100% lab grown diamond. And that so does we encourage our distribution channels to go and disclose this matter to the consumers. So our educational videos are available online. We share our educational videos to our retail channels and tell them that what, as long as you disclose the methods, you disclose the diamond process, you disclose about the education of the diamond, consumer will feel more confident uh, once, uh, you know, like misleaded consumers is entirely misleading a lot of consumers, other consumers. So, um, I think we we feel that the short profit in the business is gain for us, but eventually we are lose. You know, we are we are harming the whole industry. So exactly. we 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 always say that the knowledge sharing and the education, the clear education, is very important for the consumers. And I think that's the best things we can do as an industry. Um, the, the gemologists like IIG, they're training their students constantly to know more about diamonds in every sectors. And then they, they share this experience to the, to the every, every aspect they do pursue in future. So I think that's the best things we can do as an industry, as a, as a collectively, and we should do that. And that's why we put as a confident mark of our logo in every stage. Exactly. There are still a minority of customers who believe that lab-grown diamonds are similar. So clear education will help uh, to create a market awareness. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Well, one question is that um, uh, I have got three uh, session and it does about ethical um, side of the business that how the whole process of the jewelry can be more ethical uh, in, in the lab grown diamond. So as we see in the lab grown diamond, being a lab grown diamond itself, the first part of the, uh, the whole chain, it makes them more sustainable. The second part right now, the rising things about, uh, I, I, I can say about uh, um, the gold, where you can have recycled gold, uh, which is also very important uh, message that consumers want to hear about it. We are, we are using recycled metal, um, which means that you, we, are, we are, you know, like we are less mining, that's the that's the one of the part even for the gold as well so that's the very interesting part that consumers want to hear so recycle gold with uh, lab grown diamonds the combination of that and plus the ethical business practice it makes the whole jewelry chain very sustainable and when you when you can share the story to the consumers it's this is what you can definitely sell to the consumers and you can you can build your whole business model with this um, aspect to use in uh, in the industry, and if you are at the stage of uh, pursuing your business model uh, to step into the lab grown, has the biggest potentials to look into it. Um, as I said, that we are dealing or talking with uh, with uh, the huge population where not everyone can afford mine diamonds but we have desire of having diamonds with us. As I can say, my family, we started using lab grown diamonds like anything. And I'm proudly saying that because I'm having uh, those, that luxury in my family and I'm saving huge money of my own. Um, and I'm not saying that uh, the mine diamond is not good for buying, but if you have value of mine diamond at your side, you definitely get go for. But uh, lab grown diamond giving you another choice where you can, you can have a couple of pieces of mine diamond, you can have few pieces more as a lab grown diamond to exercise yourself, style yourself differently. And um, if you were only uh, avail uh, like affordable to having like few pieces of luxury, now you have more pieces of luxury in your side. Uh, the most important part I can just tell you about lab grown is the engagements uh, side of lab grown is getting most and most popular. The new couples, the, the people who are getting married, this is one of their most favorite diamond right now uh, because of the sustainable factor of the lab grown diamond is attracting the new consumers very heavily. And uh, they wanted to marry with the lab grown diamond proposals. And I think this trend is going very heavy around the world. 70% uh, of lab grown diamond consuming is an engagement side. So you can imagine like how many American consumers are getting married with lab grown diamond and they're getting bigger and better stones. And uh, I think this is the change that we all are experiencing today in a different part of the world. And India is the market that you will see the big change coming for lab grown diamond in coming days. And um, it's not far that um, one of you having lab grown diamond proposals for yourself and uh, marrying yourself with the lab grown diamond as, as, an, as a your engagement ring. And um, this is the best things that you can see uh, because it's more earth friendly diamonds for yourself. So I'm not here to selling you lab grown diamond, but I'm giving you all the possible prospect of the lab grown diamonds that you can look into it. And that's what I'm, I always tell with the, the retailers that uh, you should give as a lab grown diamond as an options. Like one question that I had it before, like how Indian jewelers can, uh, you know, like pursue a lab grown diamond as a, as a one sector in their stores. So it's so simple that you're giving one more choice to your consumers. When consumers walking into your stores, having certain budgets in their mind, uh, I think this is the best things that you can offer. You are offering mine diamonds. You're offering, um, uh, let's say, Swarovski or Pandora or anything 
This is one more choice you are giving them as a lab on that or plain gold jewelry. So um, that's the beauty of, uh, you know, like a retailing side that you are, you are giving multi choices to your consumers and let them decide what they want. And I think that's how the American retailers are doing today. And, and that should be Indian retailers uh, take as, a, as, a, as you know, like an example that how they get successful. I am not in favor of that having special separate lab grown stores, but you giving a clear education in the same store to the consumers and say, this is completely disclosed lab grown diamond and this is completely disclosed mine diamond jewelry and let consumers think about it and, and talk about that. And that's you will start seeing the changes happening. So may I ask a question? Yes. I'm sorry if I'm annoying. I don't know if it's appropriate, but uh, could you talk about inclusions in lab-grown diamonds? Do you plan them or? Yeah. So as I said, um, you know, the process of growing diamond is exactly happening same under the earth. You are only putting the pure carbon in the chamber yes. and then you're giving the same environment what the diamonds are getting under the earth. The pressure, the, the natural gases, and everything, it gets in one chamber. Yes. And the diamond has its own way of growing. Mm -hmm. Of course, there is one, uh, you know, like a disciplined method of growing diamonds where they grow uh, vertically uh, or in the different shapes. But the, the inside characteristic of diamond mm -hmm. has its own. Mm -hmm. um, the technology has... Uh, upgraded so where you don't have a lower color now available but you have better colors but the quality of the diamond remains it's it's the nature of its own diamond so there is no planting inside the quality or anything the diamond has its own naturally grown um, quality inside the diamonds so it's something you can't control and there would be minimal inclusions as well yes so as the technology is, is growing or uh, updating uh, we can have minimal inclusions. We can have a, we can have control of having better colors mm -hmm. with a certain way of processing, but we don't have the control in the inclusions to be getting like no, we I only want VVS clarities uh -huh. or okay. IEF clarities. No, it's not possible. You have a range of the clarities like from IEF to um, SI one, mm -hmm. and then of course you are producing in a mass. You can have a larger quantity available in VVS, VS, but not everybody. So the diamond decides what it wants to be. You diamond don't decide decides what it wants to be. Yes, absolutely. Okay. That's the right Thank word for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Yes. Hi, sir. Yes. Hi, sir. I can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay, uh, sir, I want to ask you a question. Uh, so have you ever auctioned uh, lab-grown diamonds? Have, you, have I ever auctioned lab-grown diamonds? Yes. Sir. Okay, uh, to be very honest, uh, lab-grown diamond is not at this stage that that can be auctioned. The only reason is that uh, there is not this, so that makes lab-grown diamond different than the mine diamond. So mine diamond has uh, uh, one element, which is rarity. Maybe the, the stones, every individual stones in the mine diamond has its own characteristics. That's why we see in um, very few mine diamonds, we can auction them. Right now, lab grown diamond doesn't have that, uh, you know, like um, um, sense of availability that we can see that this can be auctioned. But yes, in lab grown diamond, we have uh, 30 plus carat diamonds, which is uh, very much, you know, like got popular, uh, which is not available everywhere. So those kind of rarities available today in my uh, in the lab grown diamond, but still not at auction sites. Yes. So have you ever auctioned any any uh, lab grown diamonds? No, not uh, not auctioned of lab grown diamonds at any any of our collections, but. We have many lab-grown diamonds has been used in our uh, very high-end jewelry, like uh, in our necklaces and our, uh, you know, like uh, 
the, the jewelry that the celebrities are wearing uh, from us. So we have kind of very rare jewelry that uh, we can see this could be uh, auction pieces if some celebrities is wearing certain ways and certain, certain times. So those elements that we are building as a brand, but no, not as an uh, element of auctions that we have it right now for the lab. Uh, so I, I like your initiative uh, towards the environment sustainability and so so that you, you just spoke about it. So I just wanted to know where have you uh, done your education uh, in general from? Like what, what was your side to this industry? What is my source of education you mean? Yeah, actually yes. Yeah. So um, I'm not a gemologist and I, I haven't been in any gemologic schools and I, I wasn't fortunate like you guys are today for learning about uh, uh, diamonds, but my, my basic education was an experience. So uh, after my graduation, I have been, as I said, like I have an experience of 20 years being in mine diamond industry, dealing with diamonds every day. Uh, uh, so that makes me, um, whatever knowledge I have in, in, in a limited level that I, I gained from my own experience. Um, I, my company in, in Mine Diamonds, uh, we, were, we were dealing in, in many different color diamonds as well. So that part of business always kept me creative uh, and uh, in terms of designing, uh, in terms of uh, marketing. So that makes me more interesting about lab-grown diamond as well. And that's how I get connected with that. So my, the whole, my experience of, uh, of diamond industry is truly uh, working in the business, uh, uh, ap application in the business with my daily routines. And that's how I get my education. It's nice to hear about it. Uh, so <laughs> the one more thing you spoke about, was you said uh, light blue diamonds are, are not synthetic, uh, neither it is a artificial diamond. You said it is a lab grown diamond. So uh, basically, synthetic diamonds are man, man made diamonds. So, as lab grown diamonds are also man made diamonds. So, how is it not synthetic and lab grown diamonds? Okay, so see what we need to see as a diamond characteristic is the, the four C's which makes them diamond. Number two, the, and, and uh, the characteristic of the pure version of carbon, that uh, that's makes, the, makes the, the stone as a diamond. Uh, we can say mausonite or Swarovski. They are a softer version of carbon, we can say. So that's why they doesn't call diamond. And uh, just being having a 10 uh, hardness, uh, it called diamond. So that's how the, the similar characteristic, 100% similar character, chemically, optically, and physically, that makes the diamond lab grown diamond. That's why we don't call this a synthetic. It's a diamond because it's not synthesizing. It's not, uh, um, it's not uh, we can say, it's not different from the mine diamond. So it's when you are 100% when you same, we can say this is a diamond. The only difference is origin. The only difference is origin. One you growing in the lab, one you mi mining from the earth. That's the only difference we see. The, there is no other differences between mine and lab grown diamond. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, Good afternoon, sir. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so one more thing. Uh, so do you think that uh, uh, lab grown diamond will overtake uh, the natural diamond market in uh, in later in later future. Well, I I don't think so. That will be happen. But I I what I'm seeing right now, the lab grown diamond is building another big industry. We have a hundred billion dollar industry in lab uh, in mine diamond jewelry globally. So when we saying a hundred billion plus dollar industry as a mine, we are building a new industry which is which could be another hundred billion dollar industry in coming future so that's what i believe uh, we all have it uh, in coming days and uh, it is not overpowering or or changing the the affecting the mine diamond business but it's it's uh, having another choice for the consumers or owning more luxury for them 
that's what we are building because our our business has been taken care taken over by electronic business or like the gadgets and the computers and a lot of things has been uh, you know like they use our budget as a, as if i'm talking about luxury industry a diamond industry so i think we are taking back from them so we we can tell the consumers that you can own more luxury where you was only thinking of having one or two but now you can have more luxury uh, more jewelry at your side while you have a lab grown diamond as a choice available good afternoon sir so i have two questions yes so uh, people in india still have a uh, uh, mindset that you know lab grown diamonds are not real diamonds they yes. people still call it artificial diamonds so do you think the mindset in the future in the coming future will change and mm-hmm. go ahead and the second and the second question was so uh, how long does it uh, take uh, for a di- lab grown diamond you know how long does it take to produce a lab grown diamond from step one to up the final step yeah so uh, first of all about the mindset uh, as i said like as long as the as much as the education is growing as much as the, the consumers are getting aware about the lab grown diamond they understand the importance and they understand the real value of lab grown diamond um they they have been misleaded maybe they are dealing with the existence of the thoughts that we have been given by one particular industry uh, this is happening um as i said like americans consumers are openly buying lab grown diamond because not they they consider lab grown diamond as a, but they consider lab grown diamond as a diamond because they know that the the same luxury they're getting in a different prices so i see the indian consumers uh will be get more educations they will get more open and then they will buy lab grown diamond so i see this is only a matter of education and i think this is coming up so mindset will 100% change that's what had happened in past 10 years um at the beginning stage worldwide this was the mindset that oh this is synthetic diamond this is not diamond but as long as people know about the process as long as people know about the diamonds are the same diamond they started buying it i i told you like um i my family is using lab grown diamonds today my wife is using my family my daughters everybody is using lab grown diamond and uh, um it's it's not um it's not that you are carrying any synthetic diamond you carry 100% diamond and the second question of yours is like uh, how long time it take to grow the diamond uh it takes few weeks to grow the diamond from the the process that you think about it um it at the beginning you needed just imagine it it been is use of pure carbon seeds so you use the seed to grow the diamonds of the 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 purest version of the carbon so that's why you need either mine diamond seed or either it or either lab grown diamond seed itself it it it's need pure carbons to grow the diamond and it takes like 3 to 4 3 to 6 week of growing uh, a diamonds but a proper diamonds and it grows in the rough cubes and then the polish and cut and polish the rest all process are exactly what we do we need to cut them we need to polish them we need to measure them we need to map them everything happens exactly what we do in the in our mine diamond industry so that's what the same processes are thank you sir i had one more question uh, so uh, so the, i've i've heard i've heard this a lot so that uh, the people are businessmen are selling uh, na- uh, lab grown diamonds as natural diamonds and we uh, sorry sorry and uh, so we cannot differentiate the difference you know the difference between the lab grown diamond and the natural diamond with the naked eye do you think that is going to change in the coming future again like will we be able to differentiate it so i think it needed to be changed it's it's uh, it's a must change that we should have it um well as i said like unethical business practice should never be encouraged whether whoever they are uh and uh, if people are selling mine that's that's what the lab grown diamond industry or lab grown in india especially i don't see in america it happening right now everybody is selling this is this lab grown diamond that openly selling it and it's selling like anything um if you think if you say like in india it's happening i don't think so this is the right process to do business but um, but when you explain the cons- consumers that hey this is a lab grown diamond and it grows like this way it's pure carbon version it's uh, 
and uh, you can have it in a, such a price range and then you can afford it such a luxury in this price range and this size of the diamond. That makes them more confident to purchase the diamond. Instead of you mislead them or you giving them the different information, I don't think so that's encouraging for anyone. As long as retailers, as long as the industry is giving pure educations to the consumers like this webinars or like this, uh, uh, the sessions that we're having today, this is giving more confidence to the industry, the consumers, and people are buying with more confidence. That's more important. And that's why uh, we, as a brand, took an initiative to put our logo on, on every stone that we're selling. From one millimeters to 10 carat stones that we sell, we put our logo on it. And that's why we're telling everybody that, hey, this is the lab grown diamond, and this stands with this value for you. Yes, so it's Chetna again. Yes. So, so you were talking about uh, learning from experience that you have learned from your experience. So, so I would love to have your experience, but uh, my question is, because you are in the industry, uh, yeah. so I think you would be the perfect person to answer this question. Uh, I want to write about uh, lab grown. So can I say that the inclusions are similar or same as the ones you see in natural diamonds or are they different? They are 100% same inclusions. If All right. okay. SI means to some inclusion, it's in same lab grown diamond. Uh -huh. so the shape of the inclusions, the form of the inclusions are not different than the mine diamonds at okay. all. Okay, okay. So okay. you can, that's why we can say it's 100%. Physical okay, okay, okay. okay. Or that, thank you so much. So, uh, because I was going to write about it and I thought the only difference is source and the inclusions, but then we can remove the inclusions. Yes. The only difference is the source. 100% say. Ah, okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. I'm sorry, sir. I just had one more question. I had asked you about how do we differentiate with a, with a naked eye? I mean, right now it's not possible. Do you think in the coming future, will there be anything, you know, that, that can happen? No, uh, by naked eye, it's not possible to know which is lab grown diamond. So that's the beauty of this. And, uh, um, and, and it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be okay. identified by the naked eye. Otherwise, this doesn't call diamonds. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a diamond where you cannot say this is a mine or lab grown because they are 100% same by uh, specific instruments in the laboratories. You can... advanced uh, uh, testing that you know that this is lab grown diamond. That's why um, it's only uh, you know like purely uh, uh, you know like expertise by the gemologist to say this is mine diamond or lab grown diamond and I don't see this is available or it's, it's uh, by naked eyes you are you are, or you or me can be say this is the lab grown or mine diamond. Thank you so Sir, uh, I have a small thing. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, the methods for testing CVD diamonds is uh, fluorescent spectroscopy. Yeah, more or less same. And uh, this, uh, I'm not exactly the expert. Where how? What are the exact methods they are using it? But yes, I, I believe this is the method they are using right now. Okay. Sir. Also, I wanted to ask another question, sir. Uh, you said uh, while the diamonds are made or grown, uh, it begins in a cube form and then they cut it and polish it. Yeah. Uh, so during this process, uh, do you register it as waste stage when you cut the stone? During the, during the process, what do, what do you say? Do you register the part which you cut as waste stage when you cut it? Yeah, I mean, like when during the process of the cutting, all those, why are you talking about when the rough diamond grows or cut and polish sides? When you're cutting and polishing the cube. Oh yeah. So first of all, when the diamond grows, it grows with some polycarbon as well, which is dead carbon. We, we say this is a dead carbon polycarbon. So uh, you have to cut that because there's not a, that's not a pure form of the carbon grows with it. But uh, when you cut and polish that, the, the diamonds, when you, you get your shape, the, those, the small part of the diamond you cut, then you can, that's become the small size. That's how the small size is available as well in a CVD process. So that you can, again, then you can cut and polish with the small size of diamond. So one cubes have a multi stones together. 
Okay, so that's what I want. Yeah. If uh, there is no more questions, then we can. Uh... So, one question, sir. So, your company is selling uh, both CBD uh, and XTG bills, right? Okay, so what is the price difference between CBD and HPHP? And uh, do we have a price? I, I didn't hear you in between. Uh, can you repeat your question? So, uh, what is the price difference between CBD and HPHP? And uh -huh. do we have a, a pricing system like? Yeah. Okay, if I'm if I hear correctly, um, well, I'm getting your questions that you're asking me about, like what are the price difference between CVD and HPHP, and then any proper price systems available for lab grown diamonds or not? Yes, yes. Okay, so um, CVD and HPHP uh, doesn't have any price difference today, but yes, there is certain preferences are because CVD and HPHP both are different process of growing diamond where both are growing 100% diamonds. But these are two different methods. Uh, so there is preferences of uh, CVD grown diamonds or HPHD grown diamonds uh, available. I have seen more interest of the CVD grown diamonds by the consumers because, uh, uh, because um, some reasons I don't know, but yes, CVD is one of the preferred grown, growing diamonds by the consumers as well. So does HPHD as well. There is uh, not significant difference in the pricing today. Uh, number two, about the price method of understand the lab grown diamond pricings are. See, the whole industry is, uh, is staging right now, um, I believe. Uh, we don't have any, 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 any price structures like we have in mind diamonds that we can, we can consider the price list, uh, the price back from the certain price list or anything. Mm -hmm. So the lab grown diamond is. Uh, industry is staging right now. So you will see a difference in the pricing from one supplier to other suppliers today. But uh, in a very short time or maybe in coming days, you will see the stability in the pricing as well for, at, at every sectors. Because today uh, the growing prices are valuing by the different growers or the size of the growers or maybe maybe the available stocks. So these are the these are the challenges lab grown diamond industry today having. Uh, and um, well, by the time it will be stable as well because uh, the industry is expanding huge and uh, the demands are getting closer. So end of the day, every business stands on demand and supply chain. So we will see that in coming days, the pricing will be stabilized in every sectors. What we have seen in past like unstabilization is like uh, the shortage of HPST goods in uh, in last few um, in last few months or in last one year or two, where we seen that due to the COVID, we didn't have enough small size of diamonds available, and that's why the price has been raised in the lab grown diamond as well. And the same time, the price has been dropped in the mine in uh, the bigger stones. So it's. It's showing us that the industry is staging itself, and well, in future we will see the more stable pricing for every sector. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, sir, I just wanted to clarify one thing. What you said just now is basically um, you can't put a price on the process. You can't what? Oh, you can't put a price on the process. Yeah, not actually not happening right now today. So you don't have a differentiated price for HPHT and CBD. You have preferences of the prices, you, your products or, or, or your growing diamonds to be purchased. You can say, hey, I want only CBD grown diamonds or I want only HPHT grown diamonds. So CBD has a limitation in the small sizes. You don't have malaysian available in, in a certain levels in CBD. So, but whether it's available in HPHT, so you're using mix of the diamonds like CVD and HPHT together. So definitely based on your preferences, you can see the, the, the diamonds uh, of your own choice you can purchase. And that's the only difference I have seen today. 
I don't see, I didn't, I didn't see any significant price differences are available today for lab grown in HPHT and CVDs. People are buying everything today. All right. I had just one last question. Uh, this is a very tiny question. Uh, if you wanted to work, if I wanted to work in a, in a lab, a lab setting where I'm growing diamonds, what kind of educational qualifications would I need to have? Well, the being a gemologist is the biggest education. You can you can tell people that uh, you are a gemologist. You know diamonds in and out, so that's the best things you can share. So, if you are a gemologist students, that's the best things. Uh, that's the best advantage you have it right now. That you are you know what the process are processes are. You know what diamonds are, and that's the best thing you can share to the consumers or the retailers or any stage of the business model that you want to stand for. And uh, you don't need any special qualifications to understand lab-grown diamond because just one sector of our business, uh, one process of our business, you can say like, and you can definitely share to the consumers. So being uh, having a gemological uh, degrees are the plus point, but getting knowledge of lab-grown diamonds by, um, by anywhere is again, it's, it's fair enough to deal with the industry. And our industry is, we are so fortunate that our industry uh, is, is um, accommodating people uh, with, with the limited level of the knowledge as well. So you don't have to be expert, expert in the business, but you know that you have an expertise, it's an extra advantage for you to pursue the clients or with the consumers. All right. Thank you. May I ask, like all of you, that anyone of has dealt anything about uh, lab grown diamonds in your experience so far? Yes, sir. We have learned about lab grown diamonds. Yeah. And at the exhibition, we did meet uh, some manufacturers right. of uh, CVD and HPHT. But yeah. mostly, I think they're based in Surat. Yes. Uh, yeah, you're right. So basically, the 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 big spam of the lab grown diamond is growing in in that side of the world uh, in India. And um, I, yeah, you're right. So I was I was in DJPC with the, one of the webinar. They have it. They had it in the lab grown diamond mm -hmm. session. And uh, um, I have addressed a lot of people who has who recording. Has... Mm. Yes, sorry about the disturbance. So you were saying. Yeah, so I was saying that uh, yeah, basically, uh, if you if you know about if you have learned about more lab grown diamond, that's the best part to be go and visit it, and you will see more uh, education about lab grown diamond as well. But yeah, basically, the more information is available online right now, every part of the world, mm. you can definitely if you can definitely learn online as well. Mm. Uh, Gemological Institute like. Um, IIG is definitely lo looking forward to that and IGI, GIA, all these institutes are also having this kind of uh, courses to be understand as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you for your time, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for uh, um, having me uh, and share uh, your time and uh, uh, with me and I appreciate it and I, I hope this this will be useful for all of you and you can uh, definitely get something from here. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for sharing your knowledge. Thank you, everybody. So I'm leaving now. I appreciate it. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Sir. Thank you.